Hi and welcome to yet another video by Synapse. This is the part 2 of video on cancer cervix. Okay, let's begin. Cancer cervix. Right, so we had spoken about pap smear. Okay, we learned how pap smear is done and we were just to interpret the report now. Okay, so let's continue with the pap smear report. Okay, so fine. So this is an exfoliative cytology procedure. We know that we have not collected any tissue. All we did was just collect the shed cells, okay, which were in the uh, vagina, okay, and or the cervix. Okay, that's all. We didn't collect any tissue sample as such. So first thing, the outcome. What could be the report? The pathologist might say it is a normal report. Okay. No problem with it, cells look normal. Next, there could be reactive changes. So, reactive changes are suggestive of infections. Okay, infections. Fine. And third thing, so what could be the third one? There is a special term here called ASCUS. Okay, ASCUS means atypical squamous cells of unknown significance, as in using some atypical cells which are not normal. Okay, atypical squamous cells of unknown significance. So you don't know why it's there. Okay, you need to find out further. Okay, you need to investigate and see why you have these atypical cells whose reason you don't know, unknown significance, okay? Or uh, you could get the report as LCL or it could be HCL, okay? So let's make the option fine. Okay, it could be LCL or HCL, fine? So these are the possible outcomes of a pap smear report. Okay, now let us just quickly go into each of this very short okay so normal report fine so let's just have a look at this here okay look at the normal cells fine we have something called as the basal cells the parabasal cells okay so if you see the cervical epithelium okay so if you go from uh, from the basal membrane top so here you have all the basal cells and the parabasal cells okay so these are the cells so these cells will predominate okay when there is no hormonal influence okay so you know that during menstrual cycle the initial part of the cycle is predominantly the estrogen that's the predominant hormone the second half of the menstrual cycle it's the progesterone okay and when there is and you do not have any hormonal influence okay so the type of cells that are prominent are basal and the parabasal cells okay then uh, the intermediate cells so they are present when there is as the progesterone excess as in and progesterone is a dominant hormone then the type of cells you see in the uh, smear would be the intermediate cells and superficial cells are seen when the predominant hormone is estrogen. So what you should do here, just notice the morphology of the cells. Look at the basal and the parabasal cell. They have very large nucleus compared to the cytoplasm and it is all basophilic. Okay, large nucleus and the cytoplasm is basophilic. Now when you look at the intermediate cell, the cell size, I mean the nuclear size has reduced and the extent of the basophily, uh, basophil uh, cytoplasm is also reduced. If you look at the superficial cell, very typical, okay, pycnotic nucleus, very very tiny nucleus and the cytoplasm is eosinophilic. Okay, so these superficial cells are basically the squamous cells, right? The squamous cells will have keratin in, it, in them, okay? So that is why the pink color, that means it is mature, okay? And it is eosinophilic, okay? So this is the normal, these are the normal cervical cells that is to be remembered, okay? Just to, uh, to be, uh, what is to be remembered is as you go towards the basement membrane, okay, the cells will start having bigger nucleus, they're called basal cells, they'll have bigger nucleus and basophilic cytoplasm. Okay, cool. 
now let's look at come back to the same thing so we saw this now what are the reactive changes okay so just have a look at this very simple diagram here the report could say either it is normal so we have seen what all these cells are okay we have finished that then inflammatory i told you reactive means inflammatory here so what are the infections that can be made out from your pap smear report right so you can make out trichomonas because you can say the trophozoites okay so basically diagnosis of these infections is possible through pap smear trichomonas hsv the cellular changes when the cell is infected by your hept uh, the, this one virus okay herpes virus then candida you can see the yeast forms then actinomyces gardnerella okay and hpv okay what are the kind of changes in hpv we have coilocytes okay basically there will be perinuclear haloing this is one thing to be remembered because hpv is a risk factor for cs cervix so what happens is if the cell is infected by hpv and this is a nucleus there will be an area of basically perinuclear clearing in the cytoplasm okay that looks like a halo perinuclear halo so this is suggestive of coilocytes Okay, which is suggestive of HPV infection. So these are the list of infections that can be made out on a pap smear. Okay, so what will you do if reactive cells appear on your uh, examination, pap smear report? All you do is treat the infection. Okay, give antibiotics and then repeat the uh, examination later. Okay, do the same test your pap smear again after your course of antibiotic is over. Okay. So, fine. Now let's go back to the same thing here. What else is remaining? Okay, we finished this also. Now, ask us. Okay, well, ask us meaning atypical cells. That's it. Okay, meaning you know what is normal. You know that this nucleus should be tiny. See, this is normal. Nucleus should be tiny. Eosinophilic cytoplasm. So, these are the kind of cells you should see. Now, if you start seeing that the cells have become, I mean, the nucleus has become larger, look at it, it's progressively increasing. That means from CIN, we are going to CIN2 to CIN, CIN3. So what is happening here is the nucleus size, the extent of dysplasia is going on increasing. Okay, that is all it is. So uh, basically on pap smear, you get a report as, uh, this will be called ELSIL. This, these two will be reported as ELSIL. If you see these kind of cells, we call it etsil. Okay, high squamous intraepithelial neoplasm. Okay, and this would be called etsil. Okay, mind you, in pap smear report, you don't get it as CIN 1, 2, 3. Because to say it is CIN, carcinoma, in, uh, this one, intraneoplastic, uh, intraepithelial neoplastic lesion. Okay, you need to have a look at the basement membrane. Okay, without looking at the basement membrane and to what extent there is dysplasia. Because see, we, we said CIN 1, 2, 3 is based on the extent of dysplasia. We said less than 1 third, 1 third to 2 thirds, more than 2 thirds, right? And all of this in the presence of intact basement membrane. So for that, you really need a biopsy. From pap smear, you cannot say it as CIN. All you get to know is either it is ASCUS or HCL LCL. That's it. Okay, now uh, let's go back. <clears throat> okay fine so now we have got a report now what do we do if it is ASCUS okay so if it is so, okay, sorry, ASCUS if it is ASCUS what do we do see some of them suggest that you just observe for six months and then you repeat again okay after six months you're going to repeat the pap smear okay if there is going to be again report is equal to or more than ASCUS as in you've got LCL, HCL and all then it's better you go do a biopsy okay you have to you have to do a biopsy because biopsy is like confirmatory right and some of them say do HPV DNA testing okay so you do HPV DNA testing if it tests out to be positive again go do a biopsy but some of them say directly go do a biopsy. How do you get this biopsy? It's by a mold which is called as colposcopy. Okay, you do a procedure called colposcopy. Right, so 
either you wait for six months, repeat pap smear. If again you find abnormal cells, then you do go to colposcopy. Or you do HPV DNA testing, turns out to be positive, then you go for a biopsy. But some of them just suggest it's better you go do a biopsy. You do colposcopy directly. Okay. And this is the best method. Okay. This is what is considered best. Okay. So now that is how you are going to manage it. Fine. So what if it's LCL and HCL? What do we do? that case okay that means it is suggestive of some malignancy inside right so see now LCL refers to it actually means CIN correct but what are the chances that it, this could be a malignancy see 10 percent of HCL could be uh, LCL could be HCL and 10 percent of HCL could actually be invasive carcinoma Okay. So it becomes really important okay, that again you do a biopsy in this patient. There's, there's no thinking because these are all like high grade, right? So you have to go ahead and do a colposcope. As simple as that. Okay. Now, fine. Uh, let's just see what is colposcopy because I've been mentioning about it some while. Okay. So colposcopy is just meaning you're putting a microscope in there, okay, and you're just going to magnify the cervix, okay, to see if there are any abnormalities. And while you do that, you're going to pick up the biopsy sample. That's all, okay. So this is just a magnification, magnifying instrument. So you can magnify it up to 30 times, okay. 30x is the maximum extent of magnification that you can get. And so when you look at the cervix, okay. From where do you take the biopsy? If you see abnormal areas, okay, if you see abnormal white areas, even before putting acetic acid, okay, abnormal white areas. So they are called, uh, they're called leukoplakia basically. Leuco is white, plakia is like patches. Fine. Or you could have areas where you have abnormal vascularity. So they're called a mosaic. They could be the patterns, okay, could be mosaic or reticular pattern or punctate. So basically, they are abnormal vessels, just right here. Abnormal vascular pattern, okay. So you pick up biopsies from these areas. If nothing is seen, definitely you're going to put 5% acetic acid, see the areas which become white, and you're going to pick samples from here, okay, taking biopsies from that point. Okay, this is to be done if nothing is visible. If you have a visible growth, this is the cervix, and if you have a visible growth here like this, so you're going to take a punch biopsy from here. You know, take a punch biopsy. Here you need to actually kind of make effort to find out which is the abnormal area and take the biopsy. If it is visible, it is simple punch biopsy. Okay, now let's move ahead. You have taken the biopsy. Fine. Now what do we do with it okay you have to you'll get the report i told you biopsy report may you will get to know whether it is cin or it is invasive for now let's look at how do you manage cin correct so it could be cin 1 2 or 3 okay see cin 1 how do we manage this most probably it will it will kind of resolve within two years so all you have to do is like follow up the patient for two years simple okay follow up for two years that's all if it uh, what do you call regresses very good okay but if it persists then you do what is called as cryotherapy you go for cryotherapy Okay, we'll see what cryo is, but uh, for now, let's just see in general, what do we do in CIN1 and CIN2? See, for these two uh, conditions, no, at any age, okay, at any age, the procedure that you should be doing is leap or let's, okay, leap or let's, okay, which again, I should tell you what this is, but just remember any age, this is extremely important, this will be the procedure of choice. Fine. Okay. So I'll tell you here what is cryotherapy. 
it is very simple see cryo meaning cold so we are going to apply cold okay I mean the um, cold gas rather so here we are using nitrous oxide okay therapy is we're going to treat so we're going to apply this cold nitrous oxide gas okay which will then be liquid okay at temperatures as low as um, probably minus 20 or something like that so what we're going to do is we're going to apply it on those areas which are abnormal okay if, if you know that this is the abnormal area hold the probe there the probe is going to cool that area so what happens is if this is a cell okay if you're going to freeze it suddenly what happens to the intracellular contents okay they'll freeze okay and then uh, the cell is going to die okay because of the crystallization of the intracellular components and the fluids okay the cell is going to die that is it so there is no bleeding there's absolutely no bleeding in this case okay and this is an OPD procedure you can do it in the OPD itself so what is the most common side effect uh, after the procedure the patient is going to complain she is going to say vaginal discharge she's going to have vaginal discharge obviously because see these cells are going to die they're going to be shed so she'll have persistent watery okay let's make it this okay this is watery discharge there's no blood nothing okay and sometimes very rarely if there is scarring and all it can give rise to cervical stenosis or cervical incompetence they're pretty rare complications but important to remember and the next procedure which i mentioned was leap right leap or let so the these two are like similar procedures okay what really happens here is okay leap is long electro actually this is loop okay loop electro excessional procedure okay and Let's was large loop excision of transition zone. Okay, it is very simple. See, okay, we are seeing loop, meaning we are using some loop. Okay, if you if you go Google up the images, you'll have a probe like this. Okay, okay, and this is the loop here. Okay, this is a wire basically, and electricity flows through this. That's why we are saying electro. Okay. And then this wire is going to be really thin and we are going to pass high voltage current in this. And what the loop is going to do, it's able to do is you will be able to cut through the tissue. Simple. It's like you're taking a scoop of ice cream, right? So if you have the uh, abnormal area on the cervix that is to be excised, all you're going to do is use the loop and you're going to take it out like it's a scoop of ice cream. That's all. Okay. That is what it is. So that's why we're excising the portion which is the affected part okay so hence disease the most common place was common cell cancers right so that is why uh, let's and leap okay so these are the procedure of choice for cr and one two and three irrespective of the age of the patient very important so that is how you manage so now we have seen um, the management okay if uh, up to cin right now what if the biopsy said it is uh, invasive carcinoma okay fine that see the concept of invasive carcinoma is just that if uh, the basement membrane is breached if the cells can spread that means it is invaded it's invading the tissue hence it is invasive type of carcinoma okay so now what do we do now okay for such patients first we need to stage them okay because the treatment is going to depend upon the stage of the disease right so here it is going to be clinical staging for CS cervix it is going to be clinical staging very very important okay it is not uh, based on uh, you know surgical basically some of the this ones are surgical stagings you know and then some depend on clinical features so here it is purely based on the clinical features that's why we are calling it clinical staging so that is called as figo okay this is the figo classification federation of international uh, uh, gynecologists and obstetricians something like that so basically we are going to see the figo classification staging of ca cervix we have four uh, stages okay let me just write it here stage one stage two stage three and stage four okay 
So stage one. So one refers to uh, the carcinoma cervix, which is limited. It is limited to the cervix. Simple. It's not gone outside cervix. It is just there. Okay. Two means obviously it has come out of cervix. Okay. I'll just you know tell it as we go ahead. Okay. So it is limited to cervix. Again, usme we have one A and one B. A meaning it is microscopic. Okay. B meaning obviously it should be macroscopic. Simple. Okay. Let's complicate things here. Okay. So we have something called 1A1 and 1A2. See, you know what it means. It is just based on the depth. If the depth of the uh, cancer, the invasion, if it is le uh, less than 3 mm, then it is 1A1. If it is between 3 mm to 5 mm, Okay, then it is 1A2, simple. Okay, macroscopic refers, again, in this also we have B1 and B2. Okay, if this here, the size is less than 4 centimeters, here the size is more than 4 centimeters. Okay, simple. Let's just revise it. 1 is limited to the cervix. Usme we have A and B. A is microscopic, B is macroscopic. Microscopic, again, we have A1 and A2. Okay, with the, with, uh, which just depends upon the depth of the invasion. If it is less than 3 mm, it is 1A1. If it is between 3 to 5 mm, then it is A2. Again, B is macroscopic. Macroscopic, less than 4 centimeters is B1. More than 4 centimeters is B2. Okay, fine. So, now we said 2. 2 is when it is it's it spreads. It spreads to the adjacent structures. Here, it's going to involve the vagina. Okay, but only the upper one third of vagina is involved. Simple. Okay, only upper one third of vagina is involved. Okay, again, life is not simple. So, we have 2A and 2B. Okay, so what does 2A mean? It is uh, not involving the parametrium. So, there is no involvement of parametrium. Right, so parametrium is the tissue surrounding the you know cervix and the uterus. So this is the uterus, this is the cervix, this is the vagina. Basically, it is involving the vagina, but it is not involved just the parametrium, okay, the tissue surrounding it. B means obviously there is involvement of parametrium, it is present. Okay, then three is again it is spread further. Here we are going to involve the lower part of the vagina also. This is only upper. Now we are going to involve the lower part of vaginas also in what? Okay. So again here also we have A and B. Okay. A means there is this the tumor has not spread to the side wall or the pelvic wall. Okay. Not spread to pelvic wall or does not involve the pelvic wall. Here obviously pelvic wall involvement is present okay then four meaning it is very simple okay for all the conditions anyone can write stage four that means it is distance basically it is metastasis okay so you have a and b again a is for basically your uh, nearby structures surrounding structures and this is like distant okay fine so i hope this is clear okay and then I'll have to mention a point regarding this 3B, which I will just remember 3B here. And local spread as in, I mean, uh, it is involving the bladder. Basically, the tissues surrounding the cervix. Basically, you have bladder involvement, ureters involvement. Basically, bladder involvement. You can remember that. Not the ureter. So, B is distant, like lungs, spread to the lungs and uh, basically hematogenous spread. Okay. And one important point here you should remember which I'll use some fluorescent green here. Okay. Spread to the inguinal lymph nodes is put under distant metastasis. Important. If the inguinal lymph nodes are involved, that means it is distant metastasis. Okay. Simple. Okay. So, let's move ahead. So, I told you I'll just mention a little bit about 3B. Okay, see, three meaning there is involvement of the lower part of the vagina also. B meaning there is, it is spread up to the side wall, pelvic side wall. Now, if this is the uh, uterus, okay, and you have your cervix, this is your vagina. 
this is your pelvic wall now what is running here okay it is a very important structure okay this is the ureters okay the ureters are running here okay very 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 important now if the tumor is spreading like that okay, let's make the tumor in black the tumor from the cervix is involving the vagina and then it is moving here if it is involved the side wall that means it is involved the ureter correct so what will this give rise to it will give rise to hydro ureter okay there could be hydro necrosis okay so hence what is the most common cause of death in a cancer cervix patient the answer is renal failure basically because of hydronephrosis the patient will have renal failure and the patient will actually have uremia okay so the immediate cause of death is uremia okay because of the renal failure mm -hmm. this is something to be uh, remembered okay very important now if they say bladder involvement okay what will the stage be okay when i say there is bladder involvement it is stage 4a because it is metastasis it is metastasized to the bladder if i say there is involvement of ureter hydro ureter it will be stage 3b this is something the difference you need to remember okay that's it so now we have classified okay we have staged the patient now we need to start the treatment fine okay see there's a general rule all cs cervix cases any stage okay is radio sensitive as in you can give radiotherapy it is radio sensitive but we use surgery okay up to stage c from stage a okay 1a1 to 1b1 we can try surgery okay see though we say that all stages are radio sensitive why are we saying we should do surgery for these patients okay it is just simple that when there is a tiny tumor okay though it is invasive agreed but it is tiny it is small in size if you give off radiotherapy what will happen you are unnecessarily exposing the ovaries also to the radiation if she is a young patient okay young female then there are there chances that her uh, there could be scarring of the ovary further problem with the fertility issues and so on okay that could be the thing and uh, moreover the vagina might also undergo fibrosis so again the coital functions will be disturbed okay so that is why uh, you uh, we just consider doing surgery in these patients now what is the surgery for 1a1 you could do a simple hysterectomy okay simple hysterectomy okay and for 1a2 we can do a modified radical hysterectomy this is also called as Wertheim's hysterectomy okay i'll tell you what are all uh, structures that are removed in this hysterectomy in a while okay and for 1b1 we just do a radical hysterectomy okay it is also called meeks i guess so just we need to check that out um okay these are the procedures that we do now after uh, 1b1 we told that all of them are radio sensitive so anything beyond 1b1 you simply go ahead and do radiotherapy okay as simple as that okay so now i'll just tell you what these three things are see when you say simple hysterectomy you are removing what uh, the uterus and the cervix simple that is simple just take out these two structures you're done then modified radical hysterectomy or Wertheim's hysterectomy what are all structures that is that are removed again uterus with cervix with you are removing the upper basically one centimeter one centimeter of vagina okay and along with this you are going to remove the medial half of your ligaments your cardinal ligaments or utricular ligaments medial half of the ligaments actually okay this is very very important then also the uh, enlarged 
lymph nodes okay you have pelvic lymph nodes your para aortic lymph nodes so enlarged lymph nodes are also removed okay let's just quickly see modified radical okay we removed uterus cervix continuing down we're going to remove one centimeter of the vagina also going around we are taking off the medial half of the ligaments and enlarged lymph nodes in the pelvic area okay fine now we will go to radical hysterectomy radical means all of them okay so it includes uterus removal cervix removal instead of this we are going to remove the upper two centimeters of the vagina okay instead of medial half we are going to take out the whole okay the whole of ligaments basically supporting ligaments the supports of uterus we have studied all of them okay because there is no uterus you don't need support because you're not keeping cervix you're not keeping the upper half of vagina so you don't need any of those supports so you remove all of them again with that you're going to remove your pelvic nodes and as well as your para aortic nodes okay so let's write it here pelvic and para aortic lymph nodes okay that's simple fine so these are the procedures we are going to follow now see there's a provision here okay to be a little uh, conservative okay where is the slide okay see we have discussed okay we know what this is okay we have studied simple now let's say there is a young patient and she wishes to uh, you know have the uh, to wish, wish wishes to maintain her fertility basically she wants to conceive a child that means you have to give her the uterus and the cervix so what will you do for such patient so there's a procedure called conization okay so you can do conization in her so what really happens is that see if this is the cervix here if you can see so you're going to remove if this is three dimensional okay so you're going to remove cone of the tissue okay Okay, basically this would be the therapeutic uh, option even in you know, mild cases of endocervical carcinoma. Okay, so and uh, that's an adenocarcinoma, correct? So it could be therapeutic as well. So that's why you can do a conization procedure and you can try to save the uterus. So instead of uh, radical and modified radical, the more conservative method of doing this is radical trachelectomy. Okay, what is radical trachelectomy? See, trachelectomy means removal of the cervix. Okay, you're being radical at to what point? Just up to the cervix. Okay, meaning you're removing 80% of cervix. Okay, and you're leaving behind the uterus, very important. Along with that, you're taking the uh, your vagina, the upper one centimeter of vagina with pelvic lymph nodes with pelvic lymph nodes okay so what is happening here is you're leaving behind the uterus okay so that the lady can conceive okay fine so that is the point now if she conceives she doesn't have a cervix man so what will you do now obviously the mode of delivery the mode of delivery has to be cesarean section then there's no other option okay it is simple fine these are the conservative more conservative methods of approach to a patient with CS cervix fine okay so now we have talked till up to like 1b1 so beyond 1b1 it is just radiotherapy we have told that actually it's a combination of radio and chemo because we are using cisplatin in this patient see what cisplatin does is it will go and sensitize that tumor area okay so that it becomes more receptive for radiotherapy and our radiotherapy will turn out to be more effective that's all okay so that is why it is more like chemo radiotherapy you're giving a chemotherapeutic drug and then giving radiotherapy okay fine so that's it and okay and i'll just add a few words on this because it might be important radiotherapy we have two things okay we have bracket therapy and teletherapy so teletherapy is like overall exposure is happening bracket is that you're going to just irradiate only the area that you need okay so basically here the uh, probes are kept inside the um, you know the vagina okay but in teletherapy you are going to give radiation to the pelvic region whole of the pelvic region is going to get the radiation okay so brachytherapy there might be a few points that 
uh, they might ask where you keep the probes and all. I'll try to make a rough diagram here. I hope you understand. If this is the uterus, okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is the vagina. Fine. So now what happens here is uh, our probes go, okay, and they sit here. Okay, I'll make the probe in a different color. Okay, our probe goes in here. So if this diagram is available in any of the standard textbooks. Okay, so here we are going to use, for low dose we can use cesium or for high dose we can use iridium. Okay, these are the materials we use. We can use cesium 137 or iridium 192. Yeah, 192. Okay. So now what happens is you're going to go in there and give radiation. Okay, so you're targeting it at a point here A, okay, and a point here B. Now what do they ask here is what is this important? What is point A? What is point B? Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So fine. So we need to know what is point A and what is point B. Right. Okay. First thing first. Where is point A uh, situated? Okay. It is two centimeters above and two centimeters lateral. Okay. So I'll just use another color. Make it clear. Okay. So two centimeters. If this is your os, two centimeters above and two centimeters lateral. This is where you find A. Again, from the os, two centimeters above and five centimeters lateral, you will find point B. So the distance between A and B is three centimeters. Okay, that's it. That is how you place. Okay, then what is the importance? Why am I saying point A, point A? Why this arbitrary number of two, two? Because this is where you have your paracervical lymph nodes. And at point B, you have your obturator lymph nodes. Right. See, uh, what I forgot to mention is about the spread of CSR rigs, which spreads by lymphatics. Very important. So, which is the sentinel lymph node? It's this. If there is CSR rigs, see it's in the name, paracervical. These lymph nodes are present beside cervix. So, obviously, this will be the first site, okay, where the tumor is going to spread. So hence paracervical lymph nodes are the sentinel lymph nodes okay, of CS cervix. And obturator lymph nodes are the lymph nodes which are commonly involved in CS cervix. So the most commonly involved lymph nodes would be obturator lymph nodes. Okay, fine. And uh, hematogenesis spread is pretty rare. It happens at very late stages. And I've told that involvement of inguinal lymph nodes, uh, meaning it is metastasized already. It comes under stage four. Or B that to distant metastasis. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what is the radiation dose here? That might be asked. Okay, so at point A it will be 80 gyri, and here point B it will be 60 gyri. Okay, so that's the radiation dose. Okay, at point A and point B. Okay, so if it is okay, this is all about brachy. Okay, whatever is told here is all about brachy. If we just mention a little bit about teletherapy, it is like normal radiation you give you know, for any other tumor, how you're going to irradiate the whole body on, you know, or the local area, that's all it is. Here now, the patient will usually come for like, there will be five days a week they have to come and you will have five sessions per week. So totally it makes up 25 sessions. Okay, that's it. That's something you should remember. Okay, so 25 fractions over five weeks where you have five fractions in a week okay it's simply i've just written this that's what your textbook says to understand five into five is 25 okay so i think that's it that's everything that you need to know about cs cervix okay so just recapping okay in the first video we told what is normal we studied about what is normal cervix 
okay how it looks and then uh, we studied about what are the risk factors okay fine as we're going through i just remembered something else you need to know also about the vaccine correct so hpv is the causative organism so we need to know vaccines against hpv so we have like two types and now we have a recent new addition i'll just mention about that also so we know that there is a bivalent vaccine and then we have a quadrivalent quadrivalent and now we are having uh, another thing called nine valent okay, cool now okay so bivalent it's in the name protective against uh, uh, two serotypes basically uh, your type hpv 16 18 right so these two are the ones which are associated with csrx no risk correct this is again 16 18 and 6 and 11 okay 16 18 6 11 here there are nine zero types okay your 16 18 6 11 apart from that you will have 31 33 45 58 and one more okay 52 also here okay so more than the bivalent quadrivalent they are known by the trade names so you should remember that this is called as um cervarix this is called Gardasil. This is Gardasil name. Okay, how do I remember? It's very funny how I remember it, but you shouldn't get confused between Cervarix and Gardasil, right? So, guards, if there's a room, okay, room has four corners and you'll have four guards. So, I just remember it like, you know, four quadrivalent is Gardasil. It might help okay so then how do you how, what is the quantity so all of them you're going to give 0.5 ml im okay it is to be given im <coughs> and here the pattern is 0 1 month and 6 months these two are 0 to 6 i remember taking it as 0 to 6 okay so i had taken guard as cell is 0 to 6 and it paints like crazy okay but one thing that um, we need to remember as doctors is like after you give this vaccine now okay you have to make the patient sit in your clinic for like 15 to 20 minutes observe because the most common side effect here would be syncopal attack like they might uh, have loss of consciousness or basically syncopal attack can happen so just observe the patient for 15 minutes make sure she someone has accompanied her and then you can send her okay so and there's one more logical point these two can be given for males also can be given even in males okay but this is only given in females it's very logical because these these two uh, types can cause only ca cervix and men don't have cervix and 611 causes genital warts so hence it is protective against genital warts in males okay so that is why you can give it in males okay that's about the vaccine okay they say um, it, it should be given uh, uh, at around 12 years of age okay 12 years and there's no point in giving this after the lady's had you know her first intercourse because she's already probably might have been exposed to hpv so then it is not you know there's no point in giving so yeah okay so again going through what we had done we had studied about the basics of cervix then we uh, learned the risk factors we studied about hpv then uh, we uh, looked into the screening methods basically why screening is effective and how do you do screening that is by pap smear okay what are the outcomes of pap smear and what does it indicate okay how to read the report and what should be your next step okay ask us meaning you directly go for colposcopy most of the times else let's say meaning you have to again go for colposcopy do a biopsy so on your biopsy you could get it as cin or invasive carcinoma if it is cin management very simple one wait till two years cin one is wait till two years it would regress it might regress most of the time it does if it does not then go for cryo cryo we know nitrous oxide we're going to use and you know freeze those areas okay cin2 and 3 irrespective of age the treatment is going to be lipolets okay we know what leap is fine next coming to invasive carcinoma first you're going to stage the patient figo you know one is limited to cervix two is gone to vagina upper uh, one third 
lower part is involved in 3, 4 is distant. Okay, you must know the types. If bladder is involved, it is 4A. If ureter is involved, it is 3B. Okay, and um, one more thing is what are the investigations you used for the staging? We told it is clinical staging. Okay, you should not use investigation as in the high-end investigations. Like FIGO does not recommend the use of ultrasound. Okay, I'll just write it here then. Okay, so FIGO does not encourage the use of ultrasound, uh, CT uh, or MRI. Okay, in the and even x ray actually, uh, in the diagnosis of CA cervix. Okay, and rest of the other investigations can be used. Now, um, CT is useful only in one condition. Okay, you can use CT just to see if there is hydroureter because it will change your diagnosis. Okay, you will directly go and stage it as 3B. If ureter involvement is there apart from that if you're using CT to look at the inguinal lymph nodes it is not it is not recommended okay these are the investigations that are not recommended okay and this is very important because these are the normally used investigations we think oh yeah okay staging we just should do probably CT or MRI don't you ever think of that, doing such a thing okay FIGO says no to these investigations Okay, but exception is CT, which you can use to see if, if there is involvement of ureter. And uh, okay, so where were we? Okay, we investigated the patient, we staged the patient, then we know how to treat it. Okay, up to one uh, b one, we do surgery. We know the different methods: what is simple, what is radic modified radical, and what is ra radical hysterectomy. If we want a more conservative method, okay, younger female. Uh, wishes to uh, you know keep a fertility then we can probably do conization in 1a1 and 1a2 and 1b1 we can do radical trachelectomy okay we know what is radical trachelectomy also then after stage 1b1 it is all radiotherapy there are two types of radiotherapy we have teletherapy brachytherapy brachytherapy you should know two points point a point b what is the significance what is the radiation dose for um, teletherapy uh, we are going to give pelvic radiation basically okay and uh, that's it we need to do regular follow-up in these patients and uh, about the vaccine preventive aspect of uh, CA cervix okay fine okay thank you then it's a pretty big topic and the video is um, gonna be long I guess but yeah anyways we're done with CA cervix thank you